This is about world geography and Indian geography. So now what we will do is we will start with the basic concepts in climatology. Climatology. So how the climatology can be looked at? Climatology is nothing but the study of climate, you know, different aspects of climate. What are the changes that are taking place in climate? You know, how, why, why does climate change? You know, climate change doesn't mean the climate change what will read in environment. Climate change here is the different changes in climate, like from one region to another, the climate changes from tropical to temperate, the climate changes. Why is that happening? Why does cyclones occur more in the tropical regions? Okay, so all these things, we need, we need a broad understanding of how, you know, different phenomena take place. For that, we will read this climatology. In climatology, we are, you know, we are classifying this climatology into broadly into five areas. The atmosphere. Just give me a minute. The atmosphere, the temperature distribution, the wind and pressure systems, the water cycle, and the climatic regions. So these are the five. Oh, we, what we will do is we will start with the atmosphere. Okay, we will start with the atmosphere. First, what is weather? What is weather? What according to is weather? Daily in news we will be hearing about the weather report. What is this weather report? In this weather report, what they will be telling? They will be telling about the weather of an area. How it is going to be? How it was today? So today evening, if you are listening to the weather report, what they will be telling, how the weather was today and how the weather will be tomorrow, the forecast, okay, that they will be telling, depending on various things, using the satellite imagery, using the data and everything, they will tell. So that is the weather report. So what they are telling, they are telling about the day-to-day -day conditions of the atmosphere around you, day-to-day -day, day -day conditions of the atmosphere around a place, around a place with respect to different elements. What are those elements? Humidity, temperature, wind speed, rainfall. So these are the basic elements. Okay. So weather report simply is, you know, the changes in these elements that are taking place in an area when put together, we will get the condition of that area. This is simply the weather. So when the humidity is more, that means there might be rainfall. When the humidity is less, that means you know it is very sunny when the temperature is high that means it is going that, that means the sun is more it is sunny so depending on these elements variability we will understand the weather so weather can be cloudy sunny rainy stormy or clear it is part of the natural phenomena which maintains the equilibrium in the atmosphere but conditions can be worse sometimes conditions can get worse when there are more rains floods can happen when there are more rains, floods can happen. When there are less rains, droughts can happen. Okay. And when there is more temperature, you know, the people might fall, you know, because how because of high temperatures, people you know, it's not good. We cannot survive in high temperatures. That means more sunny. So these conditions are the extreme climatic conditions that, that can be there, just you know, that can be there around us. So this is nothing but the weather. So this extreme conditions is called the severe weather. So severe weather is not good for us. The extreme floods or extreme temperatures, we cannot survive. So this is not good for us. Okay. Now what is climate? What is climate? Every day, the weather is recorded by the meteorologist. Okay. So every day weather is recorded by the meteorologist and we will be listening that in the weather report. The weather which is recorded by the meteorologist. Now, when this changes in weather recorded daily is recorded for a long time, let's say for about 40 to 50 years. What does this mean? This means when a weather is recorded for 40 to 50 years, this means we are understanding the climate of that region. So over a long time, we will understand the basic climatic conditions of that region. What can happen? Let's say in an area, in, a, in an area, one year there is rainfall. Next year also there is rainfall. But subsequent year they had drought. This is very common. This is the pattern in that area. 
two years of rainfall and one year of drought. So when it is extrapolated for that long, we will understand this pattern. When we understand this pattern, what we can do is we can make sure we take proper precautions so that we will be able to survive even during this drought year. Okay. So climate is nothing but the long term average of the weather that is being recorded daily. Okay. That is the climate. Now, what is atmosphere? What is atmosphere? An atmosphere is nothing but everything around us. Atmosphere is nothing but everything around us. What is around us? We have gases, water vapor and dust particles. These are the things that is there around us. So atmosphere is the layer of gases surrounding a planet or any other celestial body. So for Earth, we have gases, water vapor and dust particles. But for other planet, the atmosphere is different. For Mars, you know, it is very dry. For Jupiter, it is, you know, a lot of gases are there. So for each and every planet, the atmosphere varies. This variation in atmosphere is the reason the survival is there on Earth and survival is not there on other planets. So atmosphere is nothing but the composition that is there, you know, just above the surface of the planet. So above the surface of the planet, Earth, what we have? We have gases, water vapor and dust particles. If you see, above the surface of the Earth, we will have gases, water vapor and dust particles. Now we will study in detail each of these elements individually. First, the gases. So, gases. Gases means first, what will you, what will, which gas will come to your mind? The gas which will come to your mind is oxygen and carbon dioxide. There is one more gas which is present in abundant, which we generally don't think of it, but it is very important for human survival. It is nitrogen. So nitrogen is present highest by volume. Nitrogen is present highest by volume. The top three gases are nitrogen, oxygen, argon. NOA. Remember like this, NOA. This is what you have to remember. And after that, you, here comes the carbon dioxide and all. But this, these four are mainly important for you. Remember, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide. These four are the important gases. So, among the gases, you know, we will focus mainly on carbon dioxide. Because carbon dioxide is one such gas that is important for survival as well as that is causing damage to the earth. Carbon dioxide, one important fact is, carbon dioxide and water vapor are present only up to 90 kilometers from the surface of the earth. Up to 90 kilometers, that is up to here. The atmosphere of the earth is divided into several layers. Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. These are the different layers. Up till 90 kilometers means up till mesosphere, we will have carbon dioxide and water vapor. The carbon dioxide and water vapor is very important to maintain the temperature of the earth. The carbon dioxide and water vapor are very important to maintain the temperature of the earth and they are present up to 90 kilometers that means up to only mesosphere up to only mesosphere next the carbon dioxide is transparent to the incoming solar radiation so what does that mean i'll just show you so the carbon dioxide is, here you can see the carbon dioxide is transparent to the incoming solar radiation and opaque to the outgoing terrestrial radiation this means that this is sun and the radiation is coming onto the earth. When the radiation is coming onto the earth, the carbon dioxide which is present till the mesosphere that is up to 90 kilometers, it will allow the sun radiation to enter into the earth's atmosphere. But it will not allow this radiation to escape back into the space. It is not allowing. So what does it, what is it doing? It is maintaining the temperature of the earth. See, if all the radiation which is coming into uh, coming into the earth is again reflected back, what is going to happen? The temperature on the earth is not going to maintain. Okay. So during night time, the temperature will fall drastically. Temperature will not be maintaining. So carbon dioxide is maintaining the temperature on the earth by not allowing all the radiation that is coming into the earth back into the space. So carbon dioxide is doing that. 
it also absorbs the absorbs absorbs part of the terrestrial radiation that is coming into the earth and reflects the rest okay so carbon dioxide is very important but there is one disadvantage of this what is that disadvantage because of this what is happening is the temperature on the earth is increasing temperature is increasing why is the temperature increasing because carbon dioxide is also carbon dioxide composition in the atmosphere is increasing carbon dioxide composition is increasing why is it is increasing because of the burning of fossil fuels because of burning of fossil fuels the carbon dioxide in the earth is increasing and because of this what is happening more and more heat is getting trapped in the earth's atmosphere okay that is what is happening so carbon more carbon dioxide is not good for us okay the volume has been raising uh, yeah so there are some other greenhouse gases which are along with carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide hydrofluorocarbons perfluorocarbons and hexafluorocarbons hexafluoride so these are used in refrigerator okay so these hydrofluorocarbons hydrofluorocarbons perfluorocarbons and sulfur hexafluoride these are used in the refrigerator the carbon dioxide methane and nitrogen dioxide are directly released from the burning of fossil fuels burning of fossil fuels okay next water vapor as we have seen earlier carbon dioxide and water vapor are present only up to 90 km 90 km so that means when we go up this is the earth surface when we are going up what is happening the car the water vapor is decreasing when we go from low altitude to high altitude the water vapor is decreasing why is this happening the water vapor also decreases from equator to poles here you can see water vapor also decreases from equator to poles in warm and wet tropics it is al almost about 4% but in the dry areas it is less than 1% why is this happening this is happening because this is the earth and the sun rays are directly falling onto the earth right onto the earth when the sun rays are falling onto the earth if you see properly the sun rays the radiation of the sun is higher toward on the equator but it is not the intensity of radiation is not as much as towards the poles because the sun falls directly over the equator and it is not falling directly over the poles because earth is a globe and the you know earth is a globe like this the sun rays fall directly on the equator but it is not falling it is falling with an inclination towards the poles so that that is the reason the temperature is higher around the equator so when the temperature is higher around the equator what will happen more and more you know water gets heated up and more water vapor rises up so more water vapor is present in the area around the equator than the areas around the poles that is the main reason so that is the reason when we go up the water vapor gradually decreases water vapor gradually decreases if you see the map of india so the south india the peninsular india map of india the peninsular india is surrounded by ocean surrounded by ocean so all these areas all these areas then they have more water vapor that means they have more humidity in their air compared to the areas inside the inner areas doesn't have as much as water vapor as compared to that of the then compared to that of the areas the coastal areas that means the areas which are near to that of the ocean okay and also the water vapor acts as a blanket for the earth by absorbing some incoming radiation and preserves the earth radiated heat carbon dioxide and water vapor does this special thing they preserve the heat they make sure the temperature on the earth is maintained so when the radiation is coming in the water vapor will absorb some heat because water can absorb heat the latent heat of Evaporation, the latent heat of condensation, you know, all this, all this shows us that water vapor can hold some heat in them. Okay, because see, when water is evaporating, that means it is consuming some energy, so it has some energy in it while it is evaporating. The water vapor also contributes to the stability and instability of the air. How does it contribute to stability and instability of the air? 
the stability and instability of the area is caused because of various conditions like the wind movements you know and the differential heating of the earth and all the differential heating of the earth you know causes the increase in water vapor in the air so when the water vapor in the air is more or less you know this leads to formation of clouds so further it leads to cyclones and all so that means directly or indirectly the water vapor is leading to the stability and instability of the air okay next is the dust particle dust particle so the dust particles are also present in the lower layers of the atmosphere dust particles present in the lower layers of atmosphere that means mostly in the troposphere itself in the lower layer so when we go up we don't find the dust particles the dust particles generally you know are nothing but the fine soil uh, nothing but the fine soil the ash the pollen smoke soot etc these are the, the composition basically the composition of dust particles so as these are present in the lower layers of atmosphere that means up to troposphere it will lead to the formation of clouds why it will lead to formation of clouds because the water vapor which rises will get something to hold on so over the dust particles the water vapor water vapor will come and fall and the clouds will subsequently be formed here you can see they act as hygroscopic nuclei around which water vapor condenses to form clouds this is the basic principle which we also use in the cloud seeding we also use in cloud seeding that means we will you know throw some chemicals and surrounding those chemicals the clouds will be formed okay so one more important thing is the higher concentration of dust particles are found in subtropical and temperate regions as they are dry we have seen previously that when we go you know from lower layers to higher layers or when the altitude is increasing the water vapor reduces the water vapor reduces the same thing happens even if it travels from equator to the poles so when the water vapor reduces that means the air is becoming dry when we are traveling from lower altitude to higher altitude so air is becoming dry means what will happen the dust particles will be more in that air because the air is light so dust will rise easily okay that is the reason so all these areas the mid, mid latitude and the high latitudes what will happen is there will be more of dust particles compared to that of the equator region that is the lower latitudes okay so this is about it this is about the dust particles now we will study the different layers of atmosphere atmosphere is broadly divided into various layers like troposphere stratosphere mesosphere thermosphere and exosphere these are the different layers that we have first is the troposphere what is troposphere mean the troposphere is nothing but the layer where the clouds are formed the troposphere is the layer where we survive so all the gases are present in the troposphere the temperature is also lower in the troposphere compared to that of the other layers that is the reason we are able to survive the lowermost layer of the troposphere atmosphere is called the troposphere and the average height is 13 km the thickness of the troposphere varies from equator to that of the poles why does this happen this happens because the incoming radiation of the sun's intensity the incoming radiation of the sun's incoming radiation intensity is different from the equator and that of the poles that means the sun is extreme in equator and very mild in equator so when the sun is extreme in equator what will happen the temperature will rise the temperature will rise means air will become much hotter so when air is becoming much hotter it is rising to great heights so that is the reason near the equator that the height is around 18 km whereas at poles it is only 8 km only 8 km it is also associated with climate and the weather phenomena the troposphere ends with the tropopause so tropopause is nothing but the transition layer between troposphere and the stratosphere tropopause is transition layer of transition layer and this is the layer between troposphere and the stratosphere okay so when we are going from lower altitudes to higher altitudes higher altitudes the temperature decreases so because of that what is happening the air you know rises more near the equator so the height of the tropos troposphere 
is much greater near the equator compared to that of the poles okay so troposphere ends with the tropopause next is the structure